Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala We continue reading from Imam Ghazali's Criterion of Action, Mizan Amal. And if you are reading from uh, the Dar uh, Minhaj edition, Arabic edition, we are on page 269. The third um, duty, if you, uh, if you will, we have covered uh, two um, of these duties about uh, money uh, knowing the categories uh, of uh, of money the very first one um, there's the spiritual psychological uh, aspect uh, the uh, bodily uh, care if you will uh, bodily care we don't take, talk about makeup we talk about food and then external things and that's the lowest which is basically uh, pure money and the uh, the second one uh, is about uh, the ways of uh, acquiring uh, uh, money acquisition through uh, labor or simply being uh, to inherit money or uh, finding a, a treasure or uh, being given a gift without really uh, asking for it and inshallah we'll start writing the we'll start basically reading the third duty remember that he said rahimahullah the third duty pertains to the amount that is taken what is it for لماذا يراد since you know the purpose of the circulation of wealth, this means the amount that is needed. You cannot do without clothing, shelter, and food, each of which has three levels, the lowest, the median, and the highest. The lowest, basically, the bare necessities, as could be described. The lowest level of shelter is simple accommodation, be it in a lodge, most religious endowment, or whatever else. But he began really in beat a lodge. Yes. ما يقلك من الأرض. Whatever is basically could fulfill this of uh, of earth. Uh, let's remember that Imam Ghazali gave an example. In Ihya al Medina, about uh, Abu Yazid al Bastami, at one point he uh, lived in the prairies of Baghdad, uh, subsisting on herbs, really, uh, Imam Abu said that, until his skin became green, a metaphor. Uh, uh, so he just simply slipped. Anywhere eating that which is there in the in nature. Uh, this is not to advocate that state because if all people, my argument is that if, if all people do the same, then life on earth collapses. But at the same time, this means that uh, uh, you could uh, minimize. There are those today who are minimalists. Uh, how could you change our culture to becoming to become a minimalist uh, culture? We don't talk about abandoning uh, everything, but to become at least a minimalist, which is I admire it. I know that culturally, this is not feasible. Uh, think about think about uh, in our culture, somebody who becomes engaged and. Uh, uh, say for a minute he uh, advocates minimalism uh, to his new uh, in-laws and uh, I don't think this will uh, will uh, be uh, celebrated not at all the median level is a property that is free from bustle so that you can be alone there and keep to yourself. Though 
it be the most modest of buildings with only the most basic conveniences at the limit of adequacy. Uh, free from basal bidun muzahama it means that it's not tight that's the taking into consideration the number of people so there should be no uh, friction in the physical sense uh, the highest level is a large and spacious house beautifully constructed and with many facilities as well as countless accoutrements such are such as are uh, enjoyed by the masters of the here below and the uh, well to do so these would be additional things compared to the uh, previous uh, level so it is adorned in a sense muzayyana it is adorned decorated the first now he The best of these is the one that meets the essential needs. For the purpose of shelter, is having a place to accommodate you, surrounded by walls to keep predators from you, with a roof to protect you from the rain and the hot sun. None but the truly reliant Those who rely uh, in total on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None but the two reliant are satisfied with only this. The median level is the limit of adequacy. To go beyond this is to cross the bounds of religion and approach the affair of the here below, by which I mean engrossment in its allures. As for sitting in such a place while being oblivious to it, rather than exulting, exulting in it and taking solace in it, this is permitted. So now we talk about the state of your heart and not the state of architecture. As for devoting one's time to decorating it, this is permitted for commoners in the language of jurisprudence, which is concerned with the needs of the ignorant masses, who could not be expected to give such things up. But as far as the path of Sufism is concerned, it is forbidden. By Sufism, I mean that for which man was created, namely following the path, to nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acts of worship are not a point of contention in this regard. Thus, it is said, the permitted things of the Sufis are obligatory and their obligations are permitted. Mubahatu Sufiyyati Farida wa firadatuhum mubaha Meaning, what this means is that they confine themselves to only those permitted things that are essential and keep to the obligations just as they keep to these, so that obligations and permissions are alike for them. So they are minimalist in terms of that which is permissible. Minimalist in the sense of that which satisfies the needs. As for food, 
it is the great source for the stomach is the key to all good and bad things it also has three levels it is the the lowest level is the bare necessity which is enough to fend off starvation and preserve the body and retain enough strength for worship this amount can be reduced through habit reducing food little by little until one becomes habituated to going without it for 10 or 20 days at a time some ascetics have reached the point of living off a single chickpea a day or every 20 days or some say even 40 days this is a tremendous level and few are able to reach it i would uh, you know i could not help but uh, you know very well that there's something uh, called free association ideas that um, uh, train of ideas that you cannot help but uh, they pass through your uh, your mind and I could imagine uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaving his uh, um, his rooms he would be in one of these uh, rooms uh, and uh, he would find uh, his companions also leaving like Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, he would find him also in the same position and it would be uh, hunger that forced them out of their homes and then uh, the sometimes some of the uh, Ansar would take care of them and then if, uh, you know this is something that just Allah and Ansar really they have done so much for the uh, migrant Muslims but the Prophet ﷺ left his house because of hunger he would continue fasting if there is no food so uh, and the the context would be like he did pray fajr with the uh, with the uh, you know the companions he led them in, in fajr he taught them something uh, he uh, you know dhikr uh, until uh, sunrise and then uh, probably duha the, the mosque was adjacent literally uh, and when he goes home if there's no food if there is no food, uh, he would fast. He would fast. Uh, but none, no, nothing of this is known, really, uh, about the Prophet Sallallahu We know that he and uh, Sayyid Aisha, uh, they spent two months subsisting on uh, dates and water described in the Hadith as the Aswadain. Uh, except for a gift of milk from, of course, some of those uh, Ansar, indigenous people of Medina. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, but at least there is, uh, you talk about dates and water and, uh, and milk. So uh, I say this because... Uh, And this we talk about some special blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the the case with the Prophet وسلم, For those who cannot, the median level is to fill a third of the stomach. That's the sunnah. As was discussed earlier, one should not go beyond the degree that the revelation described. For to do so would be gluttony. But not. This also means this also means sufficing with the median quality as well as the median amount. Happy is the man who is content with what is sufficient in general, but one's appraisal of that of what is sufficient changes with time. Many a man has no need to worry about his sustenance in the present day, but his heart is full of concern for the future to the point that he hopefully imagines a long life for himself and the desires to be free from worry for the duration of that long life. He might try to estimate 
his future needs and hoard for them hoarding it's that's basically um, a hoarder also is someone who simply collects things and literally stuffing uh, his or her house with the with the stuff hoarding for no need at all is yeah this is pure error saving for the future has three degrees the lowest is enough food for a day or two the highest saving for the future has three degrees the lowest is enough food for a day or two the highest is enough for more than a year and the median is enough for a year the most sublime degree is that of the one who is unconcerned for tomorrow and fixes his aspiration on today and then on the current hour and then on his current breath so that in every moment he sees himself as one who will leave the world and readies himself for that journey the one who has no concern for this and who is certain of his sustenance for this for this year and fixed on securing securing it for what comes after that is one of the rejected ones of whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he he supposes that his wealth will make him immortal Uh, where did where did the food of one day and one night or the food of a year uh, come from that's what the Prophet وسلم, of course uh, this is how he arranged for his uh, for his wives those who had um, strong reliance strong faith this mother of the faithful would have just a little bit uh, some of them would have uh, provisions for a uh, for a year and it's uh, it's good to uh, mention that this is really something that took place at the house of the uh, of the prophet sallallahu as for clothing it too has three degrees the lowest is enough to cover one's nakedness or the parts of the body that are conventionally covered with the plainest and most meager kinds of garments with regards to time it means something that will last a day and night it is related that Umar al Khattab tore his shirt on a thorn someone said to him that will not last long he replied but will i live long enough to see it uh, wear out the mean degree is clothing that befits one's station without straying into luxury in moderation or forbidding clothing such as silk the highest degree is to collect clothing and seek out luxurious garments as most worldly people do now the uh, Arabic text that I have, the Dharam and Hajj, regarding the uh, uh, the story of Sayyidina uh, Abu Khattab, is uh, is not that his uh, uh, garment was uh, pricked and uh, got torn. Uh, it is that he. Uh, patched his clothing with uh, three leaves then he was asked about it that will not last long the other issue in this uh, in this paragraph is that uh, within the median degree uh, here it is mentioned that you 
one would not stray into luxury in moderation or forbidden clothing such as silk. Imam al-Ghazali in his fatawa, which I have edited, uh, almost almost 30 uh, years ago at the stack the international institute for islamic thought and civilization during the time of sayyid muhammad naqib al-attas uh, uh, imam as i said that if the if the, if a garment has a mixture of silk and something else like cotton for example and cotton is uh, forms the majority of the thread uh, of the uh, fabric then then that silk is not prohibited what we have today for example is that they will tell you 40 percent uh, it could be wool maybe 70 percent wool and 30 cotton maybe some synthetic material but they will give the, they give you they give you the exact uh, percentage in in this case if we were to translate this into a percentage 51 percent not uh, silk then it is not considered haram in the fatawa of imam ghazali rahmallah as for marriage, it is more stressed for those whose souls desire sex, and the strength of this determines the degree of its necessity. Uh, we know very well that there were uh, scholars who never got married. Al Ulama Al Uzzab, uh, a booklet by uh, Sheikh uh, Al Fatah Bogda, Rahmullah, one of the greatest uh, uh, Hanafi scholars of our uh, time. So he wrote about those uh, scholars who did not get married, or those who almost got uh, married with uh, remarkable stories. Someone who does not have that desire, or at least it will not really uh, lead him to, uh, you know, to. Uh, to that which is haram, then that's fine. It's not a must for them. This is not Rahbaniya. This is not really becoming a monk or a... We don't have that, really. The Rahbaniya. So as for marriage, it is more stress for those whose souls desire sex. And the strength of this determines the degree of its necessity. We have already discussed the praiseworthy and blameworthy aspects of marriage and needs say no more the, about it here. If a person attains as much of these things as he needs, but then his heart becomes occupied with getting more of them, he is a fool. Indeed, he is cursed. The Prophet ﷺ said, if a person wakes in the morning safe at home, in good physical health, and with enough sustenance for that for the day, it is as though the entire world has been gifted to him. من أصبح آمنا في سربهم وعافا في بدنه عنده قوت يومه فكأنما حيزت له الدنيا بحذافيرها. It is as though the entire world has been gifted. Uh, to him uh, this is a uh, hadith uh, Hassan because of the related uh, versions of this uh, hadith all in all it, it becomes Hassan this is because the here here below is a passage to the hereafter and this amount is enough to traverse that passage all the rest is excess to which the intelligent person is indifferent. The uh, the fourth duty and the uh, fifth, I would rather, um, because it's a lengthy uh, subtitle for the uh, fourth duty. Uh, 
about uh, expenditure pertains to leasing and spending wealth inshallah we'll read this uh, tomorrow until then be the last jail subhanallah muhammadik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh